Hello, welcome to Bob's Dungeon. My name is Bob, I'll be your host. TSR is a company that's most famous for creating Dungeons & Dragons in the 1970s. And Dungeons & Dragons went on through the 80s and the 90s before TSR went bankrupt and stopped producing anything. Then Wizards of the Coast took up the license for doing Dungeons & Dragons and that's what most people are familiar with today is Wizards of the Coast versions of Dungeons & Dragons. But back in its day, TSR had other games in its library other than Dungeons & Dragons, Dungeons & Dragons being its most famous. Some of those other games that they put out include a Marvel superheroes game that they came out with in the 80s. They had a game called Star Frontiers, another one called Top Secret. They came out with a game called Gamma World, which, to this day, somehow keeps having new editions of it come out from out of the blue. Before TSR folded up and closed up shop, they came out with a science fiction game called Alternity. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Alternity. We're going to start with the Player's Handbook. This book has 252 pages and a copyright of 1998. It was published by TSR, and all of the artwork in this book is in full color. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. All of the artwork in this book is in full color. And it's pretty decent in an almost comic book kind of way. But all in all, it does a good job at keeping with its science fiction theme. To play this game, what you're going to need is a copy of this player's handbook, and copy of the Game Master's Guide. What you also need is a full set of dice. A full set of dice containing a 20-sided die, 12-sided die, preferably two 10-sided dice for only both percentiles and tens, an 8-sided die, a 6-sided die, and a 4-sided die. This game is rather strange. It's built as a science fiction game, but when you read through it, it's got the feel of a kind of generic rule set, kind of like a GURPS or a Master Book or a D6 system, but it's built as science fiction, and it has a lot of science fiction elements to play this game throughout the books. Character creation in this game is pretty simple, even though it's very modifiable, especially if your Game Master adds things like cybernetics mutations and psionics and it's got rules for those in their own chapters in the back of this book and depending on what the game master is using and the setting he's running you may or may not have those for your character the attributes are almost standard with dungeon dragons there are six attributes strength dexterity constitution intelligence will and personality you get 60 points to split up amongst these attributes these abilities and these abilities you have a minimum and maximum that you have to start with a character creation and it that depends on what species you are and if you're in this book you have some alien species that you can pick a character creation if your game master is using aliens in his game and these aliens in particular a standard human has to start with four in each attribute and can go no higher than 14 in a starting attribute and the other species have different minimums and maximums you have 60 points to split up amongst them after you get your abilities figured out you'll pick a career and your career Describes kind of what you'll do in the adventuring party. There are four careers given in this book There's the combat specialist the diplomat the free agent and the tech op and you also pick a Profession and the profession is usually tied to your career and your profession is kind of what you do outside of adventuring to make money So that's kind of nifty and they give you examples 
of different professions tied to the careers in the career chapter in this book. And then you'll figure out your skills. Each of the skills in this book are tied to an ability. And each species have several several broad abilities that they get for free. And the number of skill points you have to split up amongst those and to buy new ones depends on your intelligence. There's a chart, you compare your intelligence on that chart, and it'll tell, me how, tell you how many skill points you get, and also tell you a maximum of broad skills that you can have, not counting the ones you get for your species. So that's pretty neat. After your skills, you'll pick perks and flaws. Perks and flaws are basically merits and flaws, and they give you a bunch to pick from in here. You then pick attributes. The best way to describe those is like your alignment in Dungeon Dragons. They give you something that your character strives for, goals and so forth, and if you play within that, you can get more achievement points for your character. So that's kind of nifty. After that, you'll figure up your equipment. And there are two ways to do equipments. Either your game master can assign equipment at character creation, or you can roll up some money and spend that on your equipment. Whatever your game master chooses. And that's pretty much it for character creation, unless your game master is using some stuff in the game, kind of like cybernetics and so forth. If that's part of your game, then that can be a part of character creation. And it talks about that. And that's pretty much it for your character. <clears throat> there are rules in here for that describe how combat works and the rules for how to do things. The mechanic in this game is kind of simple, but seems a little confusing at the same time. It works on a sliding scale. You roll a 20-sided die to accomplish things. And you got to roll a target number or less on the 20-sided die. And the target number is usually your rank and a skill. But depending on the difficulty, you roll extra dice with your 20-sided die. And if there are bonus dice on the scale, then they will subtract from your 20-sided die giving you a lower roll. If they are a penalty, then you add them to your 20-sided die roll so that it's much higher and the chances of failing are greater. If you roll a 1 on the 20-sided die, it's an automatic success regardless of what the penalty dice may do to it. But if the penalty is high enough that you roll a 20-sided die as a penalty die, or more than 20-sided, then the one doesn't count as a success no more, and you pretty much fail. That's that's the best of it. But it's it's pretty simple. But I think for most people, it'll probably take a couple times playing through to actually get a hang of it. That's the, what what I get out of it. But <clears throat> it's got a chapter here devoted to equipment chapter devoted to vehicles such as cars, motorcycles, and so forth. Chapter devoted to spaceships. It's got a blank character sheet in the back that you can photocopy and use. And basically it has all the information you need to build a character and use the rules to play the game. Which is pretty cool. It talks a little bit in here about progressive levels. And the Game Master used progressive levels to describe the techni technological uh, abilities of the area you're in, starting from Stone Age on up to futuristic sci-fi. And there are eight progressive levels that you'll run into. And that's pretty much it for the Player's Handbook, which brings us to the Game Master's Guide. This book has 256 pages and also has a copyright 
1998. It was published by TSR, and all the artwork in this book is also in full color. So let's go ahead and look at that artwork. All of the artwork in this book is in full color. And it's pretty decent, again, in that comic book kind of way. But also tries to maintain that science fiction feel for this game. And somebody please tell me, is it just me, or did I just find an uncredited Nicolas Cage cameo in this book? And this book has everything the Game Master needs in order to run the game. It goes over all the aspects of character creation again, but in greater detail. Filling in a lot more information that they kind of skimp on a little bit in the player's book. It also goes over how the rule system works again going into more detail and helping you to figure out how to figure up difficulties, penalties, and bonuses so that you can use the sliding scale for the rules. It gets into creating everything for your game. How to create your world, your galaxy, creating new species, new careers, new FX, mutant powers, cybernetics, how to blend it all into your game. It also has a starting adventure called the Cauldron Station, which is kind of nifty. And it, it'll help you get started and play. It's probably a good place to get going. This book has more information on creating equipment, creating spaceships for your game if you're running space operas, creating new vehicles and so forth. And tells you how to use the progressive levels for technology in the different places. And all in all, just all the information you need to get going in the game. Which is pretty good. What do you want to look for in a Game Master's Guide? In the back of the book, there is an appendix... That gives you rules for converting Dungeons and Dragons characters over into this system. So at the time, if you were playing a Dungeons and Dragons game and wanted to take your characters into the sci-fi realms, you could do that. And that's pretty cool. It also talks in here about rewards that you can give the characters, such as achievement points. Achievement points are used to increase your character's level. And the character's have levels and it's kind of weird you get so many achievement points saved up and you gain a level and when you gain that level however many achievement points you had to use to gain that level you get to use to buy new skill points or you could save them and buy higher skill points later on however you, ever you wish to do it there's also a chart that when you gain levels it gives you some special achievement points that you can buy extra bonuses for your character outside of skill points so that's pretty nifty and that's pretty much it for the alternate game there's a lot of supplements that you can buy for it a lot of game worlds that you can place your games in it's got one for gamma world one of the additions of gamma world was made to run in this game so that's kind of cool. And there are uh, all kinds of equipment and spaceship supplements you can get to add to your game, if you wish. And this brings me to three questions. Would I play a character in this game? And I'm going to say, have to say yes. I like science fiction, and there's a lot of custom customization inside this game that you can do a lot with it. Would I run this game? Yes, I would. Like I said, I like science fiction, and this game being so customizable, I could run the exact kind of science fiction story I would like to run, whether it be space opera, superheroes, a mundane modern game, what have you. Would I recommend this book? And I'm going to say yes. Alternity, I haven't, I haven't actually got a chance to play it, but... I've read through it, and it's, it seems pretty straightforward and simple. It may take a little, a couple of tries to actually get the rules down, but it 
it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't seem all that hard. And the fact that you can do what you want to run the science fiction story you want, that's pretty cool. The book seems more along the lines of generic rules to me than an actual setting science fiction type deal. More along the lines of GURPS or something. But it's billed as science fiction, so we'll go with science fiction. But anyway, thank you for joining me at a look at these books. And hopefully you'll join me next time where we'll talk about something else. Bye.